Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now, so many of us have actually experienced trauma during childhood. And this trauma uh, might have come about because of something that our parents did or said. Maybe it came from our siblings, a brother, a sister, a cousin. Maybe it came from an aunt or an uncle. And perhaps you grew up in a very hostile environment. Now, what many people fail to realize is that our perspective on life's issues today can sometimes be as a result of how we were raised and may I say the environment in which we were raised. I feel like a lot of us were raised in hostile environments. Perhaps you were talked down on, perhaps when instructions were being given to you as a child, they were very harsh. Perhaps you were not easily pardoned when you were younger. You, you don't know what it means to experience mercy because you were always threatened whenever you did something wrong. You were always punished. Hallelujah. Now, many of you, you were beaten. See, we were raised, and I'm particularly speaking of individuals who are of my age group or maybe older than I, in a time when there was no time out, like sending a child into a corner for the child to have time out as a form of punishment, that was non-existent during our time as children. Anybody agrees? How many of you were sent into time out? Is there anyone here who is of my age, okay, who was sent into time out as a child? Talk to me quickly. Let's be real. How many of us were sent into the corner for 10 minutes or maybe half an hour to not do anything whenever we did something wrong? Or was it a case where whenever we did something wrong, we know a belt was coming, a whip was coming, and sometimes it was neither belt nor whip made of, you know, rubber or something. But sometimes the punishment came through beating with pots, irons, heavy materials that have caused even physical bruises on the body. So a lot of hostility occurred during childhood for many individuals. And it's as though the atmosphere for, you know, kind of crushing out certain things or dissolving certain things have not been presented. And so you find that individuals who were traumatized are still carrying the, the burden that comes with trauma. They're still shocked. A lot of times parents thought that they were punishing or correcting their child or children, but it was done in a very harsh manner. And it has impacted how that child today relates to the parent who did the beating or the punishment. So mother is wondering why my daughter is not into me. Why is my son not responsive to my messages? Why doesn't my daughter visit me more often? Why doesn't my son call me more often? I'm here suffering. I lack money and, and I don't have food in the house or in the cupboard. My child has a good job, but why isn't she or he helping me? And all these questions are happening. And, and I'm here to say to you because God has allowed me by his grace to come in contact with so many individuals and have allowed me to be exposed to so many incidences that I can say to you that the way many of us respond to people and respond to situations and even family members today are as a result of us having some wounds that were not healed or cauterized from trauma 
childhood trauma. Is there anybody here who understands what I'm saying and perhaps you were a victim or you were in a similar situation? Right now you're still battling with your past. You're, you're still going through some things that affected you and you feel like they were never dealt with and you feel like you're saddened in your spirit because of the memory of you know those things that occurred. I want to see you in the comments. Let me know if you are here. If you are such an individual, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Nicole says, there was love, but they loved me how they knew to. Meaning, they loved you according to how they understood love to be and how to express it. That's what you're saying. Right. Um, let me see somebody. Somebody says, yes, I still suffer from childhood experience. Oh, my God. That comment just literally disappeared. Could you just copy and paste it so I may read it quickly? I'm sorry. Uh, just send it to me again. I started to read it, but then it just disappeared. Uh, someone says, I am hurting so badly. My God. Someone says, I am here. I need healing. Someone says, I was raped and most times it comes back and affect me. Okay. Uh, we're going to touch on that uh, later. So I'm really hoping that those individuals who have been affected in that area will join us as well so that they too can be healed. Uh, someone says, time out is a privilege that we did not have. I still have the scares from the shoe eel. <laughs> Sorry, I just read it the same way it's written. You know, when your mother beat her with the heel of her shoes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Someone says childhood trauma, not physical. Okay, so you weren't beaten, but you were still traumatized. See, trauma can manifest in various ways. It doesn't have to be physical. But you might have been emotionally traumatized because of the same hostility that you grew up with, you know. So trauma manifests in various ways. And I have some good news, but I just want to look at some more comments before I delve into the great news coming from this conversation or topic. Uh, someone says, I have, I have sought for love in all the wrong places. I'm still looking for love. I haven't gotten it. Okay. Someone says, I cannot say anything to my mom because she has passed. But you were traumatized by something she did? Let me know. How do you treat with a situation like that? Where the person who has traumatized you. Maybe because the person molested you. Touched you inappropriately. Raped you. Harassed you sexually. Or threatened you if you didn't yield to them. Emotionally, sexually and otherwise. See that's called bullying by the way. Many of you you were bullied by people. Hallelujah. What if the person who has done these things to you has actually passed? How do, you, how do you treat with this kind of situation? When the person, the man who raped you, the man who abused you, the boy who touched you, the boy who defiled you is not alive anymore. We're going to be praying by the grace of God. Hallelujah. We're going to be asking the Lord to heal us. And before we get started with the prayers, there is a scripture that I wish to read for us. As a matter of fact, let me just open up by saying, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining this evening's broadcast. This broadcast is streamed on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8.30 p.m., New York time. I want you to put the days of the week on which you may find the live stream. As a matter of fact, this week we're going every day of the week. Hallelujah. So we're on tomorrow as well. But the time, you need to get the time right. It's 8.30 p.m. New York time. Please to type that in the comments. Now, as you join, you know what to do. And that is to hit that share button. That is just below the video by doing so you'll allow your friends your loved ones people you know and those you don't know to hear and benefit from what the lord will be doing in our midst tonight especially as we look at trauma and being healed from such amen 
Remember that you may find the authentic Facebook page by visiting facebook.com forward slash Shadeen Anglin. Uh, on YouTube, it's the same thing. YouTube.com forward slash Shadeen Anglin. On TikTok, you may look for Shadeen Anglin 353. Now, as you join, we ask that you hit that like button because by doing so, you'll help many people to come in contact with the content this evening. So I give you some time to do that while I present or prepare something briefly for you. Hallelujah. Please turn your Bible with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five. I want us to pay some attention to verse 17. But you know what? I believe that what is said in verse 14, 15, and 16 are also important. So we're going to read from verse 14 to 17. That Second Corinthians five, verse fourteen to seventeen. Hallelujah. All right, the word of the Lord reads thus, For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's read that again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. There is no doubt nor question that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the remedy for healing, hallelujah, trauma, Jesus Christ. Trauma can be healed only through Christ. I know that there are various options in the natural. One might recommend going to a therapist or going to a psychiatrist or psychologist and all them ists and, and, and counselors, etc. But the remedy, the ultimate healing from trauma comes through Christ. The Bible says if any person, if you who have been beaten who was severely bruised by your father. If you, if you are in Christ, my God, 
Not if you visit him. Not if you came to him last year, December, on old year's night. If any man is in Christ, I like that. Because it's speaking of the present. It's not if any man visited Christ at an altar at a church two years ago. It's not if any man has come into God's house two weeks ago or just Sunday gone. It's if any man is in Christ, not even the church. It's not even if any man is in the sanctuary. It's not even if any man is at a New Testament church of God at so-and-so. Uh-uh. If any man is in Christ. If you are washed with the blood of Christ. If the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth speaks for you because you've received of him in your heart. You've accepted Christ. You've confessed him as savior, as master, as redeemer, as deliverer, as healer, as the son of God. If you confess that it is in him that you move and you live and you have your very being, it should be a present thing. Not an on and off thing. Not a once a year thing. Not a whenever you feel like kind of thing. The Bible says if any man is currently, currently, not last year, not yesterday only. If you are currently right now in this hour, in this moment, in real time, in Christ. Because you believe in him. You've accepted him and you have made the cross the object of your faith. The Bible says automatically you are now a new, new, someone put new in the comments, a new creature. Old things, the things that you used to do, the person you used to be. The things that affected you before. When you are in Christ. When Christ is in your present. Not your yesterday. Not your last week, but today. Hallelujah. Those things that were done before are passed away. And he says all things become new so when it comes to the soul that contains the emotions and the soul which is the hub for many things like trauma offense hurt pain you name it when christ comes in you see here's the thing some of us need to understand that it is possible for people to be Christians or born again, saved and sanctified, water baptized, but are still affected by childhood trauma. Why? Because the trauma is affecting the soul, the realm of the soul. When Christ comes, salvation heals or saves the spirit. The soul still needs to be dealt with. And be put under subjection. But you see. When Jesus is not in the vessel. And at that time of course. Neither the spirit nor soul is saved. It's like it, it makes everything difficult. Healing is difficult. Deliverance is difficult. Moving forward is difficult. But you see when Christ comes in. And he takes over spirit. And spirit is in order. That alone sets the tone for soul to also come into alignment and for those things that are in there that continue to offend you that continue to affect you causing you pain and hurt they're driven out it's easy for those things to now be driven out because christ is in the vessel 
Hallelujah. So, Christ wants to heal individuals who have been traumatized in their childhood. Maybe you were left with a stepmother and she ill-treated you. Maybe you lived with an aunt and she ill-treated you. Maybe you were living with an uncle and he molested you. Maybe you were left at home many times with your older brother and he touched you. And because of that, you're struggling to trust men today. You're having all manner of trust issues in your relationships, even in your marriage now. You, you can hardly trust your husband, the man of you explain him way out. Every time he's doing something, going somewhere, he has to tell it all. Because you are wrestling with your own self, you struggle to trust. I want us to understand that we're looking at a manifestation of an effect that comes from trauma. Jesus Christ wants to come in and heal someone in the realm of their soul. Jesus Christ wants to come in and cast out just like he tossed out those things that were in the temple that were not supposed to be there. He wants to cast out those things that are in your soul because he says Hi, he wants your soul to prosper. Through the writing of John. He says, I wish that your soul will prosper. See, when you're in Christ, the spirit is okay. When you are in Christ, listen, it's a continual thing. It's an up-to-date thing. It should be a current thing. Not when you were in him two months. It should not be a past tense word. It should be in. It should be, I am in him. Not I was. When the spirit is okay. Jesus Christ. Is given even more latitude. To visit the soul. And to reach for those things in the soul. That affect you. And these things affect you in such a way that it, they, they cause you to be fruitless, stagnant, easily depressed, easily cast down, self-destructive and destructive toward others. So in the name of Jesus, we're going to be praying for those individuals who are saying, I know that there is trauma in me. I'm still angry with the person who touched me. I'm still mad at my mom for leaving me with that man. I'm still upset, etc. I'm still angry. I'm going to ask you to come forward, please. The Lord Jesus wants to minister to you. The Holy Spirit wants to minister to you today. Come forward quickly. Hallelujah. Maybe you weren't sexually defiled, but... You were beaten. You were abused. The way your mom beat you was not right. The way your dad beat you in the past. It was really harsh. And you're struggling to get over it because you felt like you were abused. Severely abused. Not punished, but abused. Come forward, please. When you're at the altar, just type in the comments at the altar and we will start praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hands right where you are.
Hallelujah. Whether you are a man or a woman, so often we think that it's only women who are affected by those things, but there are men who are traumatized. Hallelujah. Once you're at the altar, just type at the altar. And I want you to begin to think about Christ. He wants you to know that this was also carried on his back. The Bible said that he took upon himself your shame, your grief, molestation, trauma from molestation, harassment, defilement, all those things. They were on his back too. That's why the cross was so heavy, you know. The cross was extremely heavy for a reason. For a reason. So when it comes to healing, healing does not just have to affect the bones, the flesh, the organs, but there's also healing for the soul. If your soul prospers, then other areas of your life will also prosper. It's very necessary for your soul. To prosper hallelujah just raise your hands hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hands with me and say, Father, in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I believe that Christ has truly died for me and he took the shame that comes with being raped to the cross. I believe that he took upon himself the very stain of being raped to the cross. I believe he took upon himself the grief, the sorrow, the pain, the emotional pain and trauma that have affected me years later. I believe he took them to Calvary. And if Christ has taken the weight of my trauma to the cross already then i should not have to carry them myself because he has already borne them for me let's read what the word of god says according to isaiah 53 quickly hallelujah thank you jesus It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem him stricken, but smitten of God and afflicted. But let's read the first part again. Surely, tell to people, surely, tell them, certainly. He has borne our griefs and he carried on his back, represented by that wooden cross. Hallelujah. He carried your sorrows. So, what is happening now is that, ha, my God, many of us 
we have not yet surrendered that aspect of our lives to the Lord. It hasn't happened yet. You see, when you're asked, have you surrendered? You better listen to the question carefully and think about the answer carefully. Many of us are singing the song, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. No, we have not yet surrendered all. Because we're still carrying the weight, a weight that Jesus carried already for us. So we got to get to the point where we accept his perfect love and allow that perfect love to cancel those things that are weighty in our souls. There must be a cancellation, a nullifying. Perfect love must begin to nullify pain, shame, torment, you name it. Hallelujah. So right now, as you're standing there and you want the Lord to minister to your soul, hallelujah, I want you to think about the idea of surrendering all because you need to surrender this area of your life. Give it up. Stop holding on to and let God come in and take care of this. Heal it. And give you the strength to move past it. It has already happened, unfortunately. But we cannot be held in bondage by our past. No, we must move forward because there is a higher mark that lies before us. And we must continue to press toward the mark of the higher calling. We cannot continue to be kept back. By the things we have experienced already. And be kept down low. By the weight of life's issues. We'll be doing something that is redundant. Because Christ has already taken care of all these things for us. Amen. So let's go. Say after me father. In the mighty name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I surrender this area of my life to you right now. The part where Ready? Family, are you hearing me clearly? Sister Chiquita, I see you saying it's storming where I'm at. Listen, there are a lot of fireworks happening outside, but I'm still pressing. Amen? A lot of stuff. It's all over. And of course, you know that it's going to get more intense as it gets closer to midnight. Amen? So I did mention yesterday that we anticipated a clash with all the explosions, don't it? But I really hope that it's not distracting you too much. Now let's go. Father, enter in right now. Come into my vessel and empty me, Father, of those things that have offended me. Father, the words that I continue to remember that were spoken toward me, the names that I've been called, stupid, silly, worthless, slow, stubborn, careless, Whatever the words are, Father, enter in with your perfect love 
and cancel those words from my memory. Delete them, Lord. Somebody say, Lord, delete those words from my memory. You know how my stepmother described me. You know how my in-laws described me. You know how they talked to me and spoke down on me on the day when we had that big argument. Lord, but I still remember what was said and I've been scarred by their words. Lord, delete those harsh words from my soul. Somebody say, Lord, delete them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let there be a divine deletion right now. Let those words be edited out now, Jehovah. The harsh words that a mother told her child, the harsh words that a father told his son and his daughter, the harsh words that a sibling told another, in the name of Jesus, let there be a divine editing out, a divine erasing now, a divine deletion now, in the realm of the soul, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we want the Lord to touch the memory because it is when you remember it that you get into that mode. Hallelujah or mood. Father, delete the information. Say, Father, delete the traumatic information that I have stored in my mind and in my soul. Delete, Lord, the traumatic information that I have kept so dearly in my heart. Lord, I surrender the traumatic information to you right now. I lay it at your feet. I lay it at the cross. I decree and I declare that every traumatic experience I have had and every word that has traumatized me have been taken to the cross by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I surrender them now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is the broadcast better now? I understand that it's going in and out. Hallelujah. How is it now? Hopefully it's better. If it is better, just type yes quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we have just asked the Lord Jesus to deal with the memory of those things that happened. But there is a feeling that comes with the memory at times and persons have described it like this. It's like when you remember that touch, it makes you feel unclean all over again. Nasty, filthy all over again. Anybody understands? You know that feeling that comes with the memory? Is that something that you can relate to even now? Someone says, the stream keeps cutting off. I'm so sorry about that. I really am sorry, family. I'm really hoping that we can go through and then perhaps afterward you probably can rewatch considering that it, it would have been breaking up so often. I'm so sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah family. Again, it's 4th of July and a lot of celebrations are happening. I'm not sure if the celebrations are probably having an impact on the strength of our connection. I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you even now. We thank you, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just lift your hands, those of you who say, whenever I remember, I feel stained all over again. Just raise your hands. And say, Lord, remove the stain that is there in the spirit from every defilement I've suffered sexually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, physically. Remove every stain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remove every stain. Say, Lord, let there be an uprooting, a flushing, a cleansing of my soul. Cleanse me, Lord God, of the stain of hurt. Cleanse me now, Lord Jesus, of the stain of emotional abuse, sexual abuse. Cleanse me, Lord, of feeling manipulated and bullied into doing something I didn't want to do. Lord, cleanse me from the stain that comes with rape in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Cleanse me, Father. Now we bind every spirit of distraction that is in the Facebook comments. One of the things that I've gotten to learn is this. The enemy loves an audience. And because he has come to provoke the devil himself, the accuser of the brethren, he'll always show up in obvious and subtle ways. In the name of Jesus, if you don't belong here, you need to go. Do not be a disruption in the comments. You know yourself, I do not want to call your name, but do not be a disruption. If this broadcast is not for you, kindly go. Thank you so much. But do not disrupt the children of the living God who he has called and appointed to be here tonight. Thank you so much for listening and hearing. We appreciate you. Okay? We appreciate you leaving even now. All right? No disruption. You have come in a subtle way to be disruptive. Kindly go. Thank you so much. We're not going to tolerate that even now. Hallelujah. And that's from another woman. It's crazy how women love to fight against other women. But then we know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood at the same time. Amen. Just raise your, raise your hands right where you are as we continue to pray. So, Father, we thank you that the stain is leaving. We thank you, Father, that that feeling that comes whenever the mind goes back to the day when the activity took place, Lord God, right now, right now, you are removing that feeling, that thing that runs in the belly, that thing that gives us a belly hook, Lord, you are removing it now. For you said, if any man is in Christ, we are new, we become new, and all things are passed away. Lord, let those things also be moved as far away from me as the east is from the west. Lord, separate me. From the feeling, from the memory, hallelujah, and from the idea that I am that person, even as I was in the past, Lord, I rebuke everything that wants to tell me a lie about who I am, because now that I'm in you, I understand that you have made all things new about me. 
I refuse to be entrapped by my past. I refuse to be held hostage by my past. So Father, delete those information that need to be deleted. Remove the stains that need to be removed. And heal me even now, Lord, in the mighty precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let there be healing right now. Healing in my mind, healing in my emotions, healing, Lord God, to my soul in general. Father, I thank you that you're releasing me from the chains of childhood trauma. My mother has hurt me. My father has hurt me. My auntie has hurt me. My stepdad, my stepmom, my stepbrother, my stepsister, my brother, my sister, you name it. They've hurt me, but I release them now in the name of Jesus. Because Father, today I realize that Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory. Nobody else but you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. So you alone can lift my head up above the shame that I've suffered, Lord. So Christ Jesus, I surrender these areas of my life that I've contended with for a long time. I've, I'm surrendering them to you now. Because all things, not some, but all things about me are new because of you. They are new through you. They are new in you. Father, I thank you that you are touching my heart so that it will be easier for me to forgive. I thank you that you're touching my heart so that it's easier for me to release anger. Your word says, let not the sun go down on my wrath. Your word says that we should not be angry and we should forsake wrath. So father, we forsake anger right now. We forsake wrath right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask even now that you will heal our hearts. We ask even now that you will connect us again with the people who have touched us inappropriately with the people who have abused us sexually. Come on, you know what the thing was. If it was rape, call it, and you know who did it to you. Molestation, call it out. Say, Lord, heal that part of me that is still broken, that part of me that's still traumatized, and give me a heart to forgive this person and to love this person again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I know that you can make my heart new because you are the heart regulator. I know that when it comes to you, you can make all things new, make my heart new. Toward those individuals who have defiled me during childhood and who have abused me during childhood. I pray this prayer by faith, believing that when I open my eyes and when I walk away from this altar tonight, that I will feel free, that that weight will disappear. And that I will know that healing has come to me emotionally. 
and otherwise. Lord Jesus Christ, if I never said it, I confess that thou art Savior. And there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And it is the name of Jesus. I surrender all now to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for visiting me tonight. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to benefit from these prayers. Thank you, Father, for moving upon me and moving upon my soul so that it can now prosper according to your will. Father, we thank you in advance for the healing of our emotions we thank you in advance for healing us of past experiences that have traumatized us caused shocks in our lives we thank you lord that every shock wave is being visited by the power of christ and you are turning those things that were meant for evil into good from now onwards in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Now, this is a different kind of healing service. So often we minister to the needs of the flesh, the organs of the body the systems of the body the eye the ears the this the that but very little attention is usually placed on the internal matters of the human being and we thank god that today we were given the opportunity to ask jesus to visit those matters inside that are not tangible Every now and then, we, we have to ask him to minister to us in those areas because those aspects of our lives that are not so tangible are just as important as the tangible aspects. The human being is made of three components, the body, the spirit, and the soul. All three are important in order for there to be a whole individual. So if the body is well because you got physical healing from your heart condition and your skin condition and you're fine now when you go to the doctor. But your soul is not well. Then you're still off. You're not yet whole. Wholeness means that all three components of your human being are intact they're prospering they're well and there is this balance in the area of wellness or welfare where those three things are concerned let me see those of you who tonight are saying yes to jesus christ hallelujah you want to accept him as lord and savior just say father i accept christ as my lord and savior tonight lord touch my heart Enter in, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. Now, those of you who really want to make Jesus your choice, I continue to remind you to seek for your water baptism. Ensure that you ask the Lord to lead you to a ministry where you can get your water baptism done. One that is established on sound doctrine. One that believes in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's make these decisions prayerfully. And we do ask that we'll be able to conduct a baptism of our own under the ministry. But for now, I want to say to you, thank you all so much for joining this evening's broadcast. It's streamed on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, as you know. Uh, perhaps tomorrow we can delve into another area of healing. So remember just to turn on your notification bells. We will be here tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. New York time. Hallelujah. 
not sure what area the Lord will have us emphasize in prayer, but you got to be here in order to know. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for joining. Now for the benefit of those individuals who we lost during the frequent interruptions, if you haven't yet shared, you may share so that they can find it again and perhaps we'll just have to watch from the start. Again, I apologize for the inconsistencies in terms of the quality and strength of the connection. But you know some things we cannot control. But even so, we still have to press. Amen. I love you all so much, but there's one who loves you way more than I do. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one who was and is and is to come. He says, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Are you ready for your reward? Whatsoever a man soweth, of course, that he shall reap. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, everyone. And although tomorrow is Wednesday, we will be here at 8. 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Blessings, everyone. Have a good night.